Uh, welcome everybody to the 19th Captain's Cup. Welcome President Viales. Yes. Welcome President Viales. Our athletic director Kiki is here. We've got loads of alumni, family, friends, all gathered here today. And I'm delighted to kick off this weekend with this fleet dedication um, dedicating our new fleet of FJs. It's a very exciting day in the history of uh, Roger Williams sailing. And if it wasn't for the generosity of the McGraw family, the Matthews family, the Reckler family, and the Hunt, Hunt Lawrence and Liebens family, we would literally in this moment probably be slapping flex seal and duct tape on our old fleet of boats and trying to get them ready for the racing today. That is a very true statement. So we are so happy that we could just wheel the boats up here and we're gonna have a great day of sailing. Uh, as I said this before last year at the Captain's Cup and in, in the past, we sail our boats more than most people drive their cars. We sail, we are in practice three hours a day, four days a week, weekends, learn to sail, wreck sailing. Um, Occasionally, the boats are touching each other, not intentionally, mostly. Um, the point being is, we really sail our boats hard. We love team racing, and team racing you have to be really good at handling your boat in close quarters. Um, so we put a lot of wear and tear on our FJs and our 420s. Uh, as, as many of you know in the room, our goal is to compete at the highest level of college sailing. And the standard for college sailing for all the top teams is fleet replacement every seven years. And so, uh, except for Dartmouth, they turn over their boat every 10 years, but they sail in fresh water, they keep their boat stored inside overnight, and they don't sail in the spring because it's frozen. So most everybody else is seven years. Um, to compete at the highest level, we need to be training at the highest level. And it's really hard to train when your boats are literally breaking down at practice every day, or at least once a week. And when you're hosting regattas, and all of a sudden a mass comes down. These are, the, these are the kinds of challenges we legitimately were facing in the last several years with our fleet of aging whitecaps. So I cannot thank our major donors to this fleet enough. They, um, their, their gift, their generosity, what they've done for us goes beyond just physical boats. It goes beyond 18 physical FJs. It, their generosity has given us um, a sense of confidence and pride. They believe in what we're doing. They um, show all of our sailors that we have the resources and support to continue training and trying to achieve our goals. And that confidence is truly priceless, I think. So um, we, we just cannot thank you guys enough. <laughs> it's also really nice um, that we're able to support uh, a local vendor with Zim. It's great that if, when we get to that point and things start breaking down, I'm gonna call Bob, I've got him on speed dial. Bob, what's going on with this? What's going on with that? And uh, they'll be right here to help us get the boats back on track. So um, leaning, leaning on them, supporting a local Bristol business has also been a, a really great thing. Now, before, before we get on with it, I'd like to introduce uh, President Mialis, uh, a, an avid sailor, or former avid sailor, and uh, he's gonna say a couple words. Thank you, Amanda. Great to be here. Um, uh, this is my first uh, blessing boat uh, uh, at the college. I've been here for four years, and but I have done many of those. I used I started my own sailing club when I was 15 years old in Greece, and uh, we had uh, lots of optimists because we're, we had little kids and eventually got 420. So I had many of those, and we used to have a rock next to the boat and smash the bottle of champagne on the rock, and, and, and uh, so this brings back uh, great great memories. I also want to thank uh, the Matthews family, the Reckler family, and the McGraw family and the foundation for the general support. 
especially the Macro family. They have uh, not only contributed in the, the, build, the building here, uh, but also now they uh, they uh, contributed for the FJ flyers and the most recent uh, uh, gift, the new ZMFJ, that uh, from what I understand are like state-of-the-art uh, uh, for, for collegiate sailing. Uh, we're so, so fortunate to have Amanda. She's one of our superstars, uh, not only in the athletic department, overall in the university. She's one of the top, 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 top people. And the same program is one of the top people. So, sailors, if you do as well as you did last year, again, you're going to be invited at the house for an assessment. So, keep it going and enjoy and good luck for the festivities and the races. I would like to uh, welcome up the Matthews. We are lucky to come together at this fantastic event to celebrate the past, present, and future of Roger Williams Sailing. The program has a long history of success with Coach Amanda Steph Pan at the helm of this team. It's been one of the most successful programs in the country. Amanda brings passion, dedication, enthusiasm, and most of all, a love for sailing to this team every day. This new fleet of boats will enhance Roger Williams University's ability to stay, stay atop the ranks of college sailing for years to come. Our daughters, Molly and Marin's love for sailing started on the Detroit River and on Lake Michigan where they grew up. They came to Bristol to get an education, but both, like all of you, wanted to continue their love for sailing in college. It's amazing to see the talent that comes together year after year at RWU to continue the excellent tradition of excellence in sailing. Something that sets Roger Williams apart from the crowd of colleges, in addition to having one of the top sailing programs in the country, is its exceptional sense of community. Both at the college and in Bristol, the relationship with faculty, staff, and coaches the small class sizes. As parents, we feel incredibly lucky that our daughters have been able to be part of this wonderful community for the past five years. From the first day on campus, Raj sailors have a built-in family with upperclassmen mentoring younger sailors, study tables for first-year students, and of course, the guidance of Coach Amanda to help you along in sailing, classes, and well, let's face it, all aspects really of college life. You all love and take care of each other. This past spring, we had the opportunity to spend some time here at RWU for graduation and with the team at Nationals. The relationships that were formed over the years were on full display across campus. We saw students hugging professors and classmates cheering each other on in the crowd, big groups of friends everywhere taking photos, enjoying their time together. Today, it's rare to find the genuine connections you all share. People search for it all the time and never find it. You have it here. You are incredibly lucky to have a small school that prides itself on connecting with students and the greater community. The relationships you have built with your teammates, your friends, your coaches will be with you the rest of your life. At Raj, it's more than a team. And that's evident by all the alumni, families, and friends gathered here today to celebrate RWU Sailing. Amanda, we thank you for your tremendous leadership and guidance for our daughters, for all of the current sailors and the generations of alumni. Thank you for loving them like your own. Rob and I, our whole family, we wish you all the best for the future of RWU Sailing, a program where you all have truly come into your own. You persevered through some really challenging times. You've learned to be leaders, friends, and teammates. There's not any other sport where young men and women compete on the same playing field. Sailors learn independence at a young age. They learn the mechanics of taking care of boats. They learn weather, they learn about tides, current, rules, and strategy. Sailing is an incredible lifelong sport that we hope you will always love. And at RWU, love competing at the highest level of college sailing, and most of all, love each other.
And at this point, I'd like to invite up our uh, alum, Bob Coyle, class of 1982, to give us a little bit more perspective on the history of fleets and sailing at Roger Williams. I don't know how many people have got one, one year, one fleet speech regarding the fleet, uh, but I'll try. Um, when I arrived on campus, back in 1978, we had no boats, as I was informed when I showed up to my first sailing team meeting. At that meeting, they also found uh, Gerard Coleman, Dave Kurt, and Kathy Neufer, who started the team in 77, were like, oh wait, you know how to sail and race? You're going to sail A Division of Tufts next week, which was my introduction to college sailing, which was skill. Um, in 1979, Gerard Cornell, through knowing people at Halmar Boats in New Jersey, got six Phantom and six Designer Choice boats donated to the school. Um, were they ideal? Was the DC an ideal college boat? Not really, but we were sailing out of Blythewald on Mount Hope Bay, and the fact that we were able to reef sales on that boat helped a lot when we were hosting regattas because the Southwester picked up into Mount Hope Bay more than it does here. Um, in 1980, the sailing team at the time, which I believe were 12 of us, wrote a letter to the president of the university asking if we could get a sailing facility on campus. It took a while. <laughs> Although back in the 2000s, um, they were sailing on campus here uh, with a, in a condemned barn. Um, there was a shack on the beach for sails and rudders and tillers and whatnot. So I guess that was the first one. And then again, it took a while to get this fabulous facility. I go back to... Um, when we had the reverse auction to doing this. Um, you know, it made national headlines in the sailing community for the amount of money we raised and the amount of time we did that first night, which was fairly impressive. Um, da -da 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 -da. So after Blythewald, back in like 1985, uh, the team started using facilities at Bristol Yacht Club, and that went on for a while. Again, my 1980s history a little hazy. Um, I followed the team a little bit, but it was hard without um, you know tech score and everything else. We would read up stuff. I do remember sometime in the 2000s. I was watching a team race event up at um, Mystic Lake, Tufts Boathouse. And I looked up, and after a big gust of wind came through the lake, I said to myself, oh, four, five, and six, upside down, is not a winning combination. <laughs> Fast forward to 2011, the first time the team qualified for team race nationals. Yeah, they won. So that was fairly, and I know when I came back to the um, Captain's Cup in the spring that year, the banner for the Team Race Championship was hanging off the gym. So the team has always been recognized by the school. And while we were a club team back in the 80s, we were always recognized by the athletic department. And um, in 1981 and 1982, we all received uh, letters from Varsity letters from the school. That was pretty cool. Um, I'd be remiss to not talk about this event as we started you know, in 20, 2003. Uh, Scott Leppert was the coach here, and I was uh, racing snipes against him and had always talked to him or at least prodded him to maybe start thinking about an alumni of God. And you know, he prodded, but nothing happened from that. Uh, when Matt Lindblad came in 2004, he reached out to me. I said, you know, one night we got it would be kind of cool. And um, thanks to Marsha, 
and that back in the day. We started this event, I believe, in 2005 with six boats, maybe. Four alumni, Four alumni boats, right? So. Four alumni only. Right, alumni only. Um, so, um, and now look where we are. Um, we have all 18 alumni boats out. We have a division of parents, which was unheard of back in the day. And I think it's great. Um, the other thing I always liked when I came back, or was amazed from my time, was that at this event, you know, the, the team was out sailing four or five regattas on a weekend, and yet there were still team members here to help put this on. And we had 12 people on the team when I was here, so there we go. There we go. Um, throughout the years, you know, we've had some good alum come through the program, and they've gone on to um, manage America's Cup teams, uh, Cy put together an Olympic campaign, our coach Amanda is heading off to Chile in a couple of weeks to, uh, to, uh, to represent the U.S. in the Sunset class at the Pan Am Games. And we also have a one who's gone on to um, become college sailing coaches and whatnot in their own right. Uh, Spencer just started a job at Brown. Oh, okay. So there we go. Um, I won't bore you with any more. Those are my quick bullet points. Uh, glad to see everybody here, and let's go have some fun. And finally, um, I would like to invite our co-captains, Hank and Claire, up to uh, read Reverend Nancy's blessing for our fleet, and then we will christen the boats, and then we will go sailing. No, then we'll have the skipper's meeting, and then we'll go sailing. We gather here on this day to give thanks for the addition of new boats to the Roger Williams University sailing team. We are so fortunate to be able to inaugurate these vessels, which will be used for the art of competition, the enjoyment of the sport, and the building of team spirit in the years to come. In these vessels, we will ply the waters of this bay, just as generations of students have done before us. In them, we will hone our skills as sailors. In them, we will know what it's like to challenge the currents and winds of these ancient waters. We will experience days in which we will meet the demands of this sport, and there will be days in which we will be humbled by nature. Yet, we will be buoyed by the generosity of so many who made these additions to the fleet possible. We will be emboldened by the camaraderie we experienced sailing together. And at the day's end, may we add to the legacy that is Roger Williams University.